everyone, welcome to today's video. In today's video, I'm going to talk about hair loss. And I have noticed this has been kind of a bear topic again on some of the Facebook pages that I follow. So let's talk about a few things about why you may experience hair loss. Now this can go for um, hair loss in general, not just from um, you know, the carnivore diet or the ketovore diet um, or keto. So first of all, if you are under any type of stress whatsoever, it can cause you to have hair loss. Um, if you are having more stress at work than you normally do, that can cause you to have more hair loss. If you are going through a stressful family situation, it can cause you to have hair loss. Um, if you've gone through surgeries, that can cause hair loss. Um, another big thing that causes hair loss is weight loss. And it doesn't matter what kind of weight loss it is, like from, a, from dieting or just because you're too stressed to eat and you've lost weight. It doesn't matter. It, you've, any type of weight loss is going to cause hair loss. So if you've had the gastric bypass and you stop eating as much and your body goes into shock, um, you're going to have hair loss. If you are doing the Jenny Craig diet, you're going to have hair loss, right? Because our bodies are no longer going to be using that protein to build our hair. It's going to be putting the protein other places because your body doesn't know that that's what's happening. Your body does not know you are dieting or changing your lifestyle to a healthier lifestyle to lose weight and to become healthy. Your body doesn't know that. Your body is instinctual and it's it thinks it's in a starvation mode. It thinks it's going through like a famine situation or whatnot. So your body can't tell you're on a diet, right? Your brain, you tell your brain that, your brain think you your brain knows that, but your body doesn't. That's why you'll experience hair loss with weight loss. And remember, the average normal hair loss for any average normal person is anywhere between 50 to 200 strands a day. So you may have always lost the same amount of hair in, before you started keto or carnivore, but you've been seeing it, hearing about it, and now you're noticing that you're losing hair in your brush or in the shower and you're like oh my gosh i'm losing hair i'm losing more hair um but it could be just normal like it could be just your normal everyday shedding of the hair that your body goes through right so it's okay it's okay to experience hair loss um for and there's multiple different reasons um another reason why you could be experiencing hair loss is because you could be on certain medications. Um, I know I was on a few prior to switching over to carnivore and I, um, I'll talk about my hair loss experience after I get done talking about all this, but, um, I was on Prozac, Harper medication, along with uh, another type of medication as well that has been sh linked to hair loss. It's one of the side effects. I was on Prozac and Harbor medication for a long time. Um, and same if you take ibuprofen all the time or Tylenol and stuff like that, that can cause hair loss as well. And I was taking that, those almost daily as well. Um, so I think me transitioning off of those has caused, was part of my, in my opinion, major hair loss when I first started the carnivore diet. But a third thing that can affect hair loss is sodium. So if you are low on sodium, that can also cause um, hair loss as well. Um, sodium, since we, if you're a carnivore, you're eating a, a very low to zero carb diet. Therefore, your body can't retain water because carbs are what allow your body to retain water. So we need extra sodium more than the average person on carnivore because that's going to help us um our bodies to retain some of that water that we need and if you're low sodium you're not retaining some of the water and that's also part of hair growth 
Um, another thing is you can be low on zinc and you could also be low on iron as well. And along with that, you can have imbalanced hormones. Um, and so with the low sodium, low zinc, low iron, and the hormonal imbalance, you need to go get your blood checked to make sure that you're actually low in those areas. Because if you're not, and you are either like at the correct level, or you can be too high because of the, like your protein to fat ratio could be off. Um, or you can have an autoimmune disorder, or there could be something else going on that you need to, you know, dig further into. But you don't want to take those supplements if you are already good to go. So if those levels are good to go, more than likely we're not eating enough protein. And so that's where I think there's a misconception with the carnivore diet that people are like, oh, you need to eat 80% fat, 20% protein. I think you need to find what works for you and everybody's different. Um, I personally prefer a 70-30 or even a 60-40 uh, fat to protein ratio. Me, personally. Um, that's just what I found works best for me. I think 80% is a lot of fat <laughs> to eat and not enough protein, um, especially for me personally because I do lift. And I do work out and I need that more protein than I do the fat. So I, it, you need to find that good balance of what works for you and what doesn't work for you. Um, so you need to uh, work on fluctuating how much protein you're eating. You're probably not eating enough. You may think you're eating enough, but you're probably not eating enough protein. And you can also have... Um, issues with your gut that you're not absorbing the things that you're eating and so there could be an underlining problem there as well that you need to see your doctor about to investigate it further because there are some autoimmune disorders um, that don't allow you to absorb certain nutrients that your body actually needs um, you can have an underlining factor that you may not know about there's like there's a lot that goes into this than just the general overall picture. <laughs> um, so what can you do to help uh, with your hair loss? First of all, I personally believe that the benefits of the carnivore lifestyle outweigh the hair loss. Um, I have been experiencing hair loss since I started this and even previously, and I'll go into my story here in a minute. Um, so for me, I honestly don't really care. <laughs> um, my hair is thinner now and I actually like that. I've always had thick hair and it always drove me crazy. I am enjoying having a little bit of a thinner hair. Um, it's lighter in the summertime. I don't have to, I can wrap my ponytail multiple times instead of just twice or three times. So I, I'm enjoying it. Um, it, it bothers me sometimes, but I, the benefits the way I feel outweigh my hair loss issue and I don't have any bald patches or anything. So I'm personally not concerned. Um, so you got to keep that in mind. How are you feeling? Are the other benefits that you are noticing, are you coming off medication and all this other stuff? Are they, do those outweigh your hair loss issue? And remember your hair will come back. Okay. And the time frame is different for everybody. Usually it's like one to three months, but for everybody, it's different. For me, it's different. Um, I experienced hair loss a lot longer than that because um, I did research it before and I was like, okay, cool. I'm only going to experience this for a little bit. And it's not true. I'm still experiencing it to this day. And I've been a little over 13 months carnivore. Um, another thing that you can do to help is make sure you're taking your electrolytes along with a daily mineral. That's why I like the Keto Chow Daily Mineral because it has the iron, it has the zinc, it has copper, it has all the other daily other minerals besides what the Element um, Electrolyte Mix has. So I take, I use both. So I do a full packet of Element in my big jug along with a half a serving of the Keto Chow. Um, and then uh, that's usually once a day, and sometimes twice a day I'll have two elements. Like right now I have an element in here now, even though I already had one today. 
Um, so just keep an eye on your electrolyte levels and make sure you're taking enough electrolytes along with daily minerals. Another thing you can do is you can actually take a collagen supplement as well to help. Um, you can add zinc and iron as well, along with um, like hormonal replacements. But like I said, with the zinc and the iron and the hormones, obviously you need to go to your doctor and get your blood tested and make sure everything's in balance. Um, Dr. Barry has his book of uh, Common Sense Labs. I highly suggest you purchase that. You can just download it um, and then print it if you'd like. That's what I did. I bought it and, and printed it myself. Um, so I would highly suggest getting that because it goes over uh, labs that you should have take, like done annually. And if you're experiencing this symptom, you need this test done. If you're experiencing this symptom, get this test done. Like It goes over all that for you. And I, it's really helpful for me. Um, my annual labs, I got everything tested and everything came back in the normal range. My iron was a little bit higher, um, but I just don't, I just donate blood when I can. Every three months I donate blood. So I know my iron levels are great because I get, you know, the little finger prick. And if your iron levels are a certain level, they won't let you donate. This last time I donated, the time before I donated, I was 14 something. This time I am 13 something. And the 13.3, 13.5 is what my normal levels are. So the time before that, I was actually a little bit higher than normal. But um, my iron levels are always good. So I donate blood to keep them at a decent level. So um, I didn't get my hormones checked. But I mean, I probably could if I really wanted to. But like I said, I'm not, me personally, I'm not concerned about my hair falling out. Um, and then, so those are a couple things. And then make sure you're getting enough protein okay make sure we're eating enough protein um your body needs amino acids that's what your hair is made out of is amino acids protein so if you're not eating enough your body is not going to put it towards your hair it's going to put it towards other stuff in your body like i've mentioned previously in multiple videos in this channel protein is a building block of life your cells are made out of it your muscles are made out of it your bones are made out of it everything in your body is made out of protein <laughs> and so if you're lacking protein, your hair is going to probably be your last resort of where it's going to go, right? Because your cells are more important than your hair. And so just keep that in mind as well. Um, so my story of hair loss basically starts with, I think, mainly that I got the vid <laughs> um, a few years ago, September... 2022 is when I got the vid. Um, and then actually it was 21. I can't remember when I, mm, no, it was September 2021 because I separated the military in May 2022. So a few years ago, September 24, September 2021. My goodness, that affected my hair shedding cycle like nobody's business and i'm talking about my hair was falling out i would do this and it would it's clumpy like huge clumps con if i ran my fingers through always clumps of hair all the time all over the place um horrible 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 hair loss like worse than switching over to color war and so for me since then my shed cycle has always been off i will not shed at all like maybe one or two little hairs for like a month or two and the next thing you know it's like falling out so like getting that really affected my hair loss um and previously before that i've had three surgeries in a year and a half two yeah a year and a half time frame then i got that so my body was under a lot of stress so i think that was the breaking point of my body saying no nope, Boop, boop. And so my hair has all has since then never been the same. Um, like I said previously, I was on Prozac for oh, six to eight years. I forget how long, but so long. Um, I was on Harper medication for more than the two week recommendation time, right? So instead of my doctor recommending fix my diet and me 
telling myself, fix your diet, you'll fix your heartburn, right? Um, I was on that and I was taking ibuprofen like all the time because I was in constant pain. Um, uh, adding all of that on to that, um, I am not surprised I still have hair loss issues, even being a carnivore after 13 and a half months. So, like I said, though, it doesn't bother me. I am the healthiest I've ever been. I feel amazing. I really, it's nothing to me. However, I know a lot of people it does affect. Um, and just know it will stop. Um, I am not the only one that has is still after this long of being a carnivore experiencing hair loss still um some people don't experience it at all some people experience it for the one to three months and then their hair is fine and starts coming back in thicker and more beautiful than before carnivore right um but there's other people out there because i posted on a facebook post about like my experience and one person's like yeah that's kind of what i'm going through as well and i've been doing carnivore for just as long or longer than you. So everybody, depending on this, what is wrong with you and what your body's going through will all depend on when your hair will decide to be what it's going to be. Um, another thing I need to also take into consideration is I am working out. So I need to make sure I'm really getting enough protein because my protein that I'm eating is definitely going to my muscles and definitely not going up here to my hair so i could consider taking a collagen supplement it probably wouldn't hurt to add that little bit of extra um if i really wanted to i don't know if i want to spend the money on a supplement to tell you the truth it's kind of you know eh. uh, i could add liver i've been trying to add liver it's hard um i just need to buy some chicken liver and cut it up and put it in my burger because i chicken liver tasted good it was the texture so I think I just need to do that and just get the chicken liver, chop it up, and in the mornings when I make my hamburger with eggs for my lunch, I'll just throw some chicken liver in there and I'll eat that and maybe that'll help. So maybe I'm going to try that. Maybe go shopping this weekend and start that next week to see if that'll help me. But other than that, um, just stay positive. Your hair will level out. And if it doesn't, you need to seek out um, help from your doctor to actually find the underlining condition of why it may not be getting better over time. Now, my hair, I think, is done shedding kind of, sort of. Um, so my shed cycle's off. So it should actually, from what I remember and have been recalling, my shed cycle should actually stop soon because I think I didn't lose any hair from like February to April, I believe, after the vid. So I am experiencing less now when I do brush my hair. Only a little bit's coming out um, compared to big globs of it. So, but just keep in mind, we're always shedding. We always shed. And they usually say women notice more than men. Um, a lot of it's because we do brush our hair a lot more and we do have look at our brush a lot more to clean it out. And I think we notice a lot more in the shower with longer hair and stuff like that. So where men probably aren't noticing as much, so they're not recalling if they're having more hair loss. Um, I know I've, I'm experiencing less hair all over my body. Like my leg hair isn't as thick and stuff as well. Um, my armpit hair is not as thick. I know my eyebrow hair when it's growing in, which I do need to do my eyebrows, is not as much as well. Um, same with my little lady stash if I get up here um I noticed that all my hair all over my body is thinning out which is really nice so I'm enjoying that aspect of it as well but um I hope you guys found this video helpful and just make sure you are one know that it's completely normal because you are going through a stressful situation you are losing weight that is causing your body stress or if you're just experiencing stress in your daily life as well, you will have hair loss. Um, but if it doesn't go away after a few months and you're still concerned, I would suggest that you go and get blood work done from your doctor just to make sure that your levels and everything else are good to go. And make sure you're eating the accurate amount of protein that you need to be eating, as well as you could take a collagen supplement and make sure you're taking your electrolytes as well. 
And like always, don't forget that like button. Make sure you check out that join button. Make sure you subscribe, and I'll see you guys soon.